Okay, dear students, we welcome you to the 11th lecture of HVAC. A few things are left in the syllabus which we will be finishing now only. One thing is that we have to know the vertical shaft layer. Vertical shaft layer. Now, I have to make you understand what is vertical shaft. Let's take this is the building. This is the building plan. This is the building plan. In the building, there will be rooms here. In between, all the rooms are there. But there will be shafts here. Vertical shafts at the corners. Here are the vertical shafts. Here are the vertical channels. Last time we talked about HU at the side of the building. So in that case, it's having a vertical shaft. HU can be HU room can be placed here also. Can be placed here also. So vertical shafts are taken generally at the corner of each room. Now what this vertical shaft signify? Vertical shaft signify these are the through holes. Through holes. These are the holes. Coming from the say it is a fourth story building, eight story building, nine story building. It's a through hole through which services pipe will pass through. All the services pipe. One I talked about the false ceiling, that services pipe pass through the corridor of the false ceiling. And the second is the vertical shaft. Through the vertical shaft, all the services pipes will pass from ground floor to the top floor of the building. How many floors it may be? Maybe 15th floor, 16th floor, 30th floor, 40th floor. They must have a vertical shaft. Not have a one vertical shaft. Depending on the size of the building, they may have four vertical shafts at four different corners. So what happens in case of vertical shafts? This is a through wall through which a shaft is made. Shaft means a hole. A thorough hole is there through all the floors. Say this hole, this hole will be there at the ground floor. This hole will be there at the first floor. This hole will be there at the second floor. And so on and so forth. Means it will be having the holes throughout the building. If I take a section of the building. If I take a section of the building. This is the building. This is the building. Here is vertical shaft running. These are the floors. These are the floors. These are the floors. Say this is ground floor. This is first floor, this is second floor, this is third floor, and like that. And this is the vertical shaft through which all the pipes and all the service pipes will run through this vertical shaft. All the service pipes will run. What are the service pipes? The chilled water pipe, condensed water pipe for HVAC, the chilled water, the supply air duct, return air duct for HVAC, and also the firefighting pipes, the plumbing pipes, the water pipes, all these pipes will be running through this vertical shaft. Vertical shafts are located at the corners, at the each corner of the building, through which the pipes and ducts will pass from the bottom floor to the top floor, like this. These are the floors. And this vertical shaft will be closed with a wall. This, this will be closed with a wall. That means, you cannot see anything being in the floor. You, you will just see a wall. But behind the wall, there are service pipes running. So this is the concept of a vertical shaft. Now, in case of HVAC drawing, the vertical shafts play a very important role. In case of HVAC drawing, the vertical shafts play a very important role because our chilled water pipes, condenser water pipes, then different ducts. Then other services, they all run through the vertical shaft. Now, vertical shafts are generally of circular type. Let me make it, make it bigger so that you can understand it better. Vertical shafts are made of circular types. These are the vertical shafts. These vertical shafts have different depths. This is 
supply air duct this is return air duct this is chilled water piping supply and return so the supply chilled water piping and return chilled water piping then we have condenser water pipes without insulation condenser water pipes are without insulation this we are having condenser water pipes then other than condenser water pipes we have fire fighting pipes we have plumbing pipes we have water pipes drain pipes all sorts of pipes that means we make the duct this we can write as chilled water pipes chilled water pipes that's why insulated you can see the insulation this you can write return air duct return air duct this is supply air duct this is for hvac these are condenser water pipes the different pipes other than that are there this is say fire fighting pipe fire fighting this is not our service but it will also run through then there will be drain pipes then there will be water pipes water pipes may be more in number depending on the cold water pipes and hot water pipes now when you have to design the spacing of the pipes you have to pour in this manner the different dimensions i am putting you can see different dimensions
You can see different dimensions I have put here in the piping system. This is 50 thick for insulation. This is 50 thick insulation for the tube water pipe. Then comes 300 diameter of the pipe, say 300. It may be 500, it may be 400, it may be something else. I think the diagram is clearly visible to you and you can see all the dimensions I have indicated. So, these are different dimensions. This is 300 dia, the diameter of the pipe, tube water pipe. Then again 50 thick, this is insulation. Insulation, lapet ke rahe pura surface pe. And because of that, it's covering the whole surface. So, 50 thickness here, 50 thickness here. Then, between these, between this pipe and the duct outside periphery, there should be a gap of 100 mm. 100 mm for what? 10 cm. So, you can put your hand in between. You can put your hand between and do the maintenance work. That you can do. And then, 25 mm thick. This is 25 mm thick duct insulation. Then, duct height. that I have not put what is the height. It may be 300, it may be 500 depending on the uh, duct size. And then, 25 thick again. This is 25 thick insulation because this is return air duct. I told you, return air duct is generally 25 mm thick insulation of fiberglass. And supply air duct insulation is 50 mm thick. So, taking that into consideration, we have put 25 mm thick thickness here. Then, there is 100. Then again, there is the 100 space. So, you can put your hands in between and do the maintenance work. Here, there is an angle through which the ducts are mounted. There is angles, the screws can be opened, nut board can be opened, tightened. You can do with the help of putting your hand in between. Then comes supply air duct with the insulation thickness of 50. This is 50 thick, this is 50 thick. This is the insulation thickness of supply air duct. This is showing the total cycle. Other than that, there are condenser water pipes. Condenser water pipes without any insulation. If there is enough space, so I have not put a space here. You can put the space depending on the location that you put 100 in between. This is, if you put a space in between these, these condenser water pipes, that can be, you can easily put 100 in between. 100, 100 mm, these all are mm. This 100 mm thick in between the condenser water pipes. So, this is the way the whole segment, and other than that, there are small pipes like drain pipe, that is plumbing drain pipe. Firefighting pipe, that is a small pipe, water pipes. These pipes can be easily accommodated in the shaft. But problem lies in the accommodating this big ancillaries of H, uh, HVAC system. What is this? This is a duct, a big side duct, big side duct, supply duct, big side, return duct, big side, chilled water supply pipe, big side, chilled water return pipe, big side, condenser water supply pipe, big side, and condenser water return pipe, big, big side. And you have to adjust it within this vertical shaft. And in the vertical shaft, there are other different pipes, firefighting pipes, water pipes, drain pipes, etc. So this is how we are putting the whole floor together. You can see the whole floor is together here. The diagram is clear. And this is, we are putting this vertical shaft and through the shaft, this is a plan. This is plan of shaft. This is plan of shaft. This is plan of vertical shaft. You can see if the vertical shaft is cut in the middle because this is the vertical shaft which is running. This is a plan. This is vertical shaft running. If you cut it in the middle, then you get this. It is not circular here, you can see. But generally vertical shafts have put in a circular fashion with a cement compound structure here. Because circular fashion accommodates easily more piping and also the construction activity is easier in circular pipes. This, I mean circular shaft, not circular pipes, circular shaft. The maintenance is also easier in circular shafts. So these pipes are very important in a building. Here, these pipes move from ground floor to the top floor. And this is the plan view. If you have cut the beach, then this is the same. So you can see this supply air duct going up. This is this way it's coming. Return air duct going this way. Chilled water pipe this way. Chilled water supply pipe, chilled water return pipe. Condensed water supply pipe, condensed water return. And then other services. 
and this is the vertical shaft diagram you are to accommodate in the service. This is vertical shaft diagram used in a building to run through the building in general. Now we are clear about the vertical shaft diagram. Just now I was talking about that. Now I will be talking about variable frequency drives or VFDs. See, the advantages with this video is that you can run the video many times and you can see whatever I have said here. You see whatever I have said here and you see the diagram, everything is clear to you. That helps you in answering the questions, whatever I am doing. Now, I will be talking about variable frequency drive or VFD. This is also called VFD, variable frequency drive. Now for making the VFD certain things should be clear which I am going to make it just for you. 